Yes, people, what's happening? Welcome back to the channel. Big up to everyone locked in over on Chelsea Fan TV as always. And welcome to another daily transfer update, guys. And today, Chelsea have signed the number six. It's not the one we've been looking for. It's not Moises Caicedo, but it is 19-year-old Leslie Uguchukwu, I think that's how you pronounce it, from Wren. Uh, £23.5 million pounds Roughly, he's going to sign a long-term contract medical within the next 24 hours. And then a decision is going to be taken on what happens with him, whether he goes out on loan, most likely to Strasbourg, or if he uh, stays with Chelsea, which is a slight possibility. So we've got all the latest on that. Uh, we've obviously got the latest on Eli Wahi as well. Talks progressing well on Chelsea signing him from Montpellier. And reportedly, Rayan Cherky's move to uh, Chelsea is off. Chelsea perhaps not best impressed with his attitude. We'll dive into that. All the letters of Mohamed Kudos, the centre-backs. Loads and loads to get into, people. Make sure you smash the likes on both channels. Make sure you subscribe if you're new round here, guys. I'm on the road to 5K. Now, remember, people, the draw for winning the Chelsea shirt is going to take place on Monday. I'm going to do a watch-along tomorrow, but obviously won't be streaming that on Chelsea Fan TV. So I want you, you guys to have a chance to win it as well. So we're going to run that on Monday. So every every new subscriber is going to have a chance to win that shirt. So make sure you do subscribe, guys. But yeah, loads to get into. Make sure you get involved in the chat. Big up everyone in the chat, as always. Hi, thanks for coming, bro. Um, We've signed the number six. We've all been crying out for him. But it's not the number six we were looking for. Um, I don't expect you to know too much about him, mate. Um, But what are your initial thoughts on this move? Mate, I, I know nothing about this guy, to be honest with you. Um, You know, I was off my phone for most of the day so I actually missed you know the whole news um but then yeah I, I sort of got and got onto my phone and you know checked what was happening we signed this guy I think 23.5 million pounds in pounds obviously yeah it's the fee there in euros and uh yeah it seemed to be coveted by quite a lot of clubs I think Arsenal in the past I saw what we're looking at him um and uh yeah I think I saw a quote where this guy was talking about playing Chelsea in 2020 you know how big Stamford Bridge was and everything so yeah, you know, as you do, just look up a few comps and stuff like that, see, you know, what you think is <laughs> not the best way to judge a player. But it looks like a sort of DM profile that we've been missing, you know, tall, long-legged, uh, physical powerhouse, uh, got really good defensive stats. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's also very young as well. So I think it remains to be seen whether he'll go on loan or stay, but he does look like an interesting prospect and potentially one of those that could be worth double in just, you know, a year's time. So... Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's I've um, got similar reaction to when we signed Andre, Andre Santos, to be honest with you, because like when we signed Santos, I was like, okay, who the hell is this? Um, similar type of thing, you know, seemed to be coveted by quite a lot of people. Uh, and he, you know, Santos might be in our first team next year. So this could be a similar type of thing, you know. Um, I think in other areas we've maybe, uh, you know, hoarded a bit of this young talent too much. But, uh, you know, in, in the DM area, this is a profile specifically. I'm talking about like his size and, and just, yeah. you know, his physical stature and his height um but we've we've kind of lacked since like the Mikel the Matic you know even Moises Caicedo who, oh, and SCN as well was kind of a powerhouse yeah like um, we might we, we obviously probably play Caicedo as a number six but even Caicedo is like you know he's six foot he's not really a Matic or a Mikel so I find this one interesting I'm interested to see what happens with him yeah, no, I, I am as well. I mean, I look at it and like, obviously, I know a lot of people aren't necessarily happy. I see quite a few comments coming in the chat saying, you know, oh, while well, we're signing another kid, we need to get Caicedo and all this sort of thing. Look, I, 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 I get that. But you look at this, mate, and you could look at it two ways. You could look at it in terms of like, this guy has actually played a lot of games for Ren last season. He was a big part of them. He played a lot of games, a big part of them getting into the top four in, in the French League last season, playing to a decent level. Um, as you say, you know, the profile is one we've been lacking for a long time now. And, you know, you look at this guy, say comparable to Romeo Lavia, for example, same age, um, both 19 years old. Um, and, you know, we've picked him up for 23 and a half million pounds and he could develop at a similar rate to, to, to Lavia. And it's someone that we've kind of stepped in and picked up for potentially 20 plus million pounds less than Romeo Lavia is going to cost. I'm not saying right now it's quite difficult to do a comparison because I don't actually know how good this guy is, but we obviously run the numbers. We obviously got to trust the footballing people, but I actually think this could be a smart pickup depending on how he develops. But I mean, I, 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 I don't know. Could you see him maybe playing a part in the first team squad this season? I mean, I, I'd find it hard to believe. Obviously reports are saying that, you know, we can't fully rule it out and obviously Pochettino and the club will decide. But do you think he could play a part? Um, personally, I think he'll go on loan. Um, but 
I, I don't know. I wouldn't be. First of all, I think it depends how quickly he comes in. Um, so if he gets maybe the last preseason game against Dortmund, that I think could be interesting. But I just think the lack of time probably felt and loan. But having said that, I don't know if it was Strasbourg and whether the player would accept that because Ren, you know, they're a better they're team. Better. So yeah, I, f- I find it interesting to be honest. With you. Obviously, we've had Andre Santos play as a number six as well in preseason, and we all think he's probably going to stay. So. Yeah, uh, I'd probably say loan, but I'd be interested to see where he goes. To be honest with you, I mean, yeah, no, I, 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 I agree, mate. I mean, in terms of obviously controlling his playing time, you would suggest that Strasbourg would be great. We know that he'd probably play every game. And um, Chelsea, obviously, trying to get Strasbourg to compete further up the league by providing them with some some decent players. But I, I, I don't really get why we couldn't just loan him back to Wren. Wren are a decent side. Uh, they played good football. They came in the top four last season. There'll be some form of European football, which Strasbourg don't have. And maybe that would be better for his development. I, I, I don't really know. But I mean, you look at kind of the age, the profile, it ticks all the boxes that that we're looking to go for. I mean, it certainly wasn't a name that was necessarily on anyone's radar, potentially for, for Chelsea to go and sign. I mean, mate, do you think getting a deal done like this goes to show that actually despite what we're seeing with the Caicedo deal, we can actually move quickly and get deals done quickly because no, what there, there were no leaks of this at all. No reports that we were, well, certainly none that I've seen. You, you may have seen some, but, and this got done pretty quickly. We, and like, we kind of kept it quite well under wraps. Well, I think what I'd say is, as far as my knowledge goes, I, I think there's two different teams, like yeah. for negotiations. Like, I don't think this is being done by, Winston and Shield, I think it's more Shields um, and the other guys. So, yeah, I, I, I'd probably say, like, I, I don't think this necessarily says that we can do deals quickly because I don't think it's from the sporting directors themselves. Personally, I think it's from, um, you know, other people in, into the board. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, mate, would you say now that this signing rules us out signing Romeo Lavia? Yeah, probably because then, I, like, what would be the point really of signing this guy? Like, the, if we sign Lavia, then you're just saying, yeah, we want to flip this guy for profit. So that's what I mean about talent hoarding. It's like I'm, I trust that they're going to sign good players in terms of like this guy's probably a good player. But is there a pathway, or is it just like which ones do we want to you know see in our first team or whatever? Like, which ones actually have pathways to the first team, or are they just all like being talent hoarded? Do you know what I mean? And just flip for profit because. I think that's going to be the case with some of the guys. And then, you know, the ones that probably do really well probably stay in our squad, um, you know, and, and probably make it into Chelsea. So, yeah, I just think the overall pathway is quite unclear for, for some of these young guys. Yeah, it, it is, isn't it? I mean, you look at the youngsters who signed, I think it's clear that Angelo is going to go out on loan. Obviously, Diego Moreira as well, probably. Maybe one of Cassidy or Chukwameka will possibly go on loan as well. Maybe this guy. There's quite a lot of loan spots to go. Obviously, Selena, Selena which we'll touch on, has gone out on loan to, to the to the Belgian to the Belgian league. Um, there's only seven spaces for loan spots, so we kind of got to pick and choose carefully who's going to go on loan and and who's going to go where, and you know who's going to get the best. Um, you know, development from the, from their loan sort of thing. So look, I, I think this is exciting. I think it's a profile that we've been crying out for for a long time. Um, but again, I don't think we can pretend that we know anything about him. I mean, guys, anyone in, in the chat know much about this guy? Has anyone watched him very much? I mean, Ren's a, a good school to, to, to learn at. You know, obviously they had they had Kamavinga um, not too long ago, who's a top top class midfield player. This could be another one coming through the ranks there. They do produce good midfielders. So I guess that could only uh, bode as a good thing. Mate, in terms of the price, what, what do you think of the price point for him? 19 years of age, um, obviously around £23.5 million pounds roughly. Do you think that's, think that's a fair fee? Um, I mean, I guess the future will, will, will determine that. Um, it's quite expensive right now, I would say. But, you know, I, I, think, I think Santos and... <clears throat> Andrew Pires were similar. Well, Santos was about 15, wasn't he? Santos was a bit cheaper, I think. Uh, yeah, maybe. But yeah. you're sort of looking at sort of 15, 20 million bracket for, you know, these young guys and sometimes potentially even more. I think probably because he's had quite a big experience in league on for such a young age, probably a little bit more. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, we'll see. I think the future determines the price that we've paid. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, to be honest, man, I, I think it. I mean, of course, it's only going to 
the, how, how he does is going to determine the price. But, you know, the fact that he's 19 years of age, the fact that, you know, he's got a high ceiling of potential, he's already playing uh, senior level football in Liga, it's a good standard uh, with, with Ren, can, can, can only bode well for his development. I mean, what have you made more, more broadly, mate, of the, of the youth recruitment drive? I, I get your point that it feels like we're hoarding a, a, a lot of young talent at this point and not all of it's going to be it's going to be a success some will be flipped on for profit of course um we have got a lot at the club at the moment you look at angelo you look at obviously uga chukwu now you look at diego Moreira, um you know obviously you've got gabriel slanina etc to, to, to name just a few do you think maybe eli wahi to come in as well do you think we're signing too many or do you think the plan is to sign a set amount and then the, the best ones will 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 keep for the squad, and the others will be good enough to sell for a profit. I mean, what what are your thoughts on 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 the way this youth recruitment drives going? Um, I really only care about the ones that are deemed good enough for the first team. Like, yeah, and obviously there'll be some that are planned to be coming in in like one or two years' time if they do well. But yeah, I do think we're signing too many. To be honest with you, like the striker one especially doesn't make sense to me. Like. Wahi, we got Fafana, we got Broya, we got Jackson. Like, there's four strikers there. And he like and Kunku can play there as well. And Kunku, yeah. Like, and you and can it... never rule out Chelsea going to buy a big striker if one comes out on the market, like maybe a Tony or something. So, yeah, there's there's certain areas which I think, like, what's the point? But there's other areas where I think, you know, okay, this is quite a good signing. Like, I think Santos was quite a good signing because he's proven that he's probably first team ready through preseason. And, you know, this is one where we're lacking in kind of that position. And he can also play as a box-to-box. So I think it varies. Like, some of them I'm okay with. Some of them I'm like, what's the point? You know, waste the money or whatever. But, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't... I, I mean, overall, I think it's been... In terms of the players, I think very good. You know, there's... Clearly, they've got a very good talent identification um, model. And I know Kyle McCauley from Brighton is still there. Yeah. Um, Joe Shields, obviously one of the best in the business in terms of looking at young talents. Our scouts, obviously. Um, so yeah, I'm 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 quite happy with the players we're signing. It's just like the volume's a bit much, isn't it? Yeah, like like where like I don't know if you sit back and and like look at it, then maybe you think like, okay, did we really need this guy or that guy? But overall, I think it's been good. Yeah, no, I, 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 I think it's been good as well. And like ultimately, you know, I don't think we're going to have uh, too many. Uh, I, th- I think a few of these will work out and naturally a few won't, but that's kind of just the way it goes. But I think the, the signing of these young talents is twofold. It's not just to get cheap players for the first team. It's also to to make a profit as well, because at the old, end of the day, fo- the football club is is also a business, despite us wanting the, the success on the pitch as well. I mean, if we just kind of briefly talk about the youngsters, mate, I mean, there's seven loan spots available. Um, what who, who do you think is going to take them potentially? Because obviously we know that Saloon has taken one already. We know that Datra Fafana has gone to Uni in Berlin. Uh, Angelo is more than likely going on loan. That's three. I mean, we've got this guy, Ch- uh, Chukwu, Chuk- Ugu Chukwu, which could be a fourth. Lewis Hall may be going on loan five. Um, you know, Marrera as well, six. Like the spaces fill up quickly. I mean, who who do you envisage going out on loan? Is a Casabe, is a Chukwemeka possibly as well? I mean, what youngsters do you think will go on loan? No, I mean, if we start with Lewis Hall, I, I think by the limited amount of time he's featured in pre-season, I don't see him being part of the squad this season. I think he's quite a way behind. In, I, think, I think he's quite a way behind in uh, in terms of exposure to senior level football. Yes, he's played more Premier League games than Ian Martin, but Martin's had two full seasons in the championship, doing well at Coventry and playing a big part in a Burnley side winning the championship last season. He's played a lot more senior football than than Lewis Hall has. Do you envisage Lewis Hall going on loan? Because he's barely featured in the pre-season games either. He probably will. But I think that's actually a disgrace if he does. Honestly, I, I, yeah, think no, he's one no, I don't agree with that. I think on I think on our form, on form, he's probably our best left back. I'm not even joking. Chilwell has been for me, overrated for some time now. Kukure is terrible. Like, I would sell Kukure and, and keep Hall for me personally, but um, depends what loan he goes on. But yeah, no, Lewis Hall should 100% be in our squad. I, I think last season, man, especially in such a bad team and such a dysfunctional system with two terrible managers, like, look how well he performed in big games. So, yeah, no, I, I think Lewis Hall should definitely stay. I'd be disappointed if he goes out on loan. Um, but yeah, like like you said, I mean, I've not looked too much into the loan spots. No. Like, is 
But but yeah, I mean, Casado probably go on loan. Marrera, Angelo, like we got too many almost to send on loan. That's yeah. the thing. Like when you look at things, it's uh, Fafana's already gone on loan. So well, I'm yeah, still, I mean, mate, very quickly, what, what, what do you think of Slanina's loan? Because obviously, some people were saying he could be number two this season. That's not going to happen. We are going to sign a new goalkeeper. Just briefly on Slanina's loan uh, to Kaz Upen, I think, in a Belgian league. What do you think of that as a loan move? Do you think that's a good move for him? No idea, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. Don't know the team. Don't know the league very well. Belgium league. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a European league. It's better than the MLS, but uh, I, I don't know. Maybe he's taken the Courtois route a little bit. I'm not, I'm not too sure, but... I mean, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I, I would have kept him, to be honest with you. I would have kept him as the number two. I don't see a point in buying one. If if we're going to keep Kepa, then we might as well just keep Slanina as well, personally. But Yeah, I mean, but are you surprised that... Selena, I, I, certainly against Wrexham, mate, I was really surprised that Slanina didn't play. I mean, we put, put coming in goal instead. Um, but I thought Slanina would have actually played, surely, some part in these pre-season games. But I don't think he's going to play at all. Is he Is he left the tour? Is he going to do the tour and then go and go and join up? Or do we, do we not know? I don't know, mate. Not don't sure. know. Are, are you surprised he's not played in any of the games, though? Yeah, I am surprised. He also came back late for some reason. I don't know why. He wasn't featured for like he wasn't in the squad, was he? For like the first two or no, three games. No, so, he wasn't. Not sure. No, I, I, I don't know either. But yeah, I mean, the midfield is, is certainly exciting. I mean, in terms of who we're looking at, um, you know, let's just round out this midfield section before we move on to obviously uh, Caicedo and whatnot briefly. Um, out of the three young lads, we we presume that all three aren't going to be part of the squad. Who do you think's going to go out on loan in terms of uh, Chukwemeka, Cassidy, and Santos? Because I think I think we can agree Santos is probably going to stay, and then it's I think one of those three goes on loan. It'd be between Carney and Cassidy. And for me, I, I like both of them, but I think Carney's a bit further in his development and can maybe play a bit bit more of a role in the team next season. Um, so I'd probably loan out Cassidy. But do you, mate, first things first, do you agree that only one of those three will go on loan? And 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 secondly, which one of those three? do you think should go on loan? Um, I think Carney's an interesting one because I personally prefer him a bit deeper, driving from deeper. Um, I don't like him as this number 10 role he's been playing in pre-season personally. I know some do, but I just think he's better when he picks the ball up deeper. Uh, kind of like how Ruben was for us. Um, so I think there's a possibility uh, Chuck Kameka could, could go on loan just for minutes because especially if we sign like a Kudus or someone, um, and he doesn't drop into midfield, then like into like the more advanced pivot, then I think he could go on loan. Cassidy will go on loan. Uh, I think Santos will stay. So I think two of them will actually go on loan. If if we sign Kudus, like if we sign that number 10, then yeah, I think Cass- um, Chuck Omega might go on loan. Yeah, no, mate, I, I, I hear it. I mean, mate, just on Cassidy, uh, there's been reports linking in with a move to Leicester City, a loan move. I mean, Fabrizio was saying a while back that, you know, it was Premier League loan or Serie A loan. Do you think that Leicester would be a good loan for him? A team that should be winning the championship or certainly be right up at the top end of the championship. A league that obviously he had a little bit of experience in last season. The championship served the likes of Mount, Rhys James, uh, Tamori in the past very well. Do you think a loan to, to Leicester would be good for Cassidy? Um, I can't say definitively, but on the basis of like, you just think of Leicester and, you know, you'd probably say yes, but... The thing is, is like they've got a new manager, haven't they? And I think yes, he's very... one of the Peps. It was Peps' yeah, assistant last I, I, season, yeah. Yeah, so I would be intrigued, actually, because, you know, like, OK, Arsenal bottled the league, but obviously Arteta has, has done quite well at Arsenal. And, you know, maybe he's <laughs> Leicester have gone down that route. Like, let's grab the next one of sort of Peps' disciples sort of yeah. things. I mean, one the one thing is, if, if he could, I mean, I'm sure he'd share a similar philosophy to Pep. If he does, then I'd say, yeah, because Cassidy, I think, needs to improve on the ball a little bit. Um, but yeah, uh, so so yeah, probably I, I would send him on loan to Leicester if, if they can find a decent, uh, like starting spot spot for him and position. Then then yeah, I think it'd be a good move to be honest because the championship's always competitive, and Leicester should be winning that. And I could see him get a lot of goals for Leicester to be honest with you. Like the positions they take up, I know they've lost you know Madison and Barnes and stuff like that, and I'm not sure of their recruitment, but I could see him doing quite well there to be honest. Yeah, I, I, I could as well. I mean, I think there'll be interest from Serie A. There could be some interest in the Premier League, potentially. Maybe teams a little bit lower down. Um, we'll, we'll kind of have to wait and see. Just on Lewis Hall, I know you don't want him to go out on loan, but he probably will. 
do you, do you think a championship loan, a Premier League loan, what, what sort of loan do you think would be best for his development? He obviously needs to go somewhere where he's going to play every week and he might not. Do you think he's good enough to play every week at a lower at a lower Premier League side? Maybe somewhere like Crystal Palace, for example. I know there's been links to Newcastle recently as well. I mean, do you think a Premier League loan is 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 definitely possible for him? Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I think he's definitely good enough for us. So there's there's no way he should be going in the championship. He's he's too good, honestly. Um yeah, Premier League loan if he goes, but Again, I think with Lewis Hall, he needs to define his position because for me, I, I see him as developing into a left back, but he likes to play midfield. He is originally a midfielder. So, yeah, and I think he has more long term like hope of making it as a as a left back for us rather than a midfield because just naturally, I think the midfield, you buy more midfielders. It's a, posi- it's a position that you look to improve more. Um, and it also comes under scrutiny more, I think, as well. So, yeah, I think I think he needs to define his position. We need to talk to him like this is what you're going to develop as like and then choose a loan from there. But the Premier League could be really good. Don't send him to Newcastle. Like we're fighting for top four with them this yeah. season. Like that would be an awful decision. I, mean, um, I think someone like Crystal Palace could be decent. Yeah, maybe, but they've not got like Roy Hodgson doesn't really inspire me to be honest. So well, no, I, he doesn't. I want to send him somewhere where they've got quite a decent progressive manager, you know, that that like to play possession football. Um I'm just trying to think really, there's not really that many Premier League teams where I, where I would send them to. Maybe, I don't know, maybe somewhere like a Fulham would be all right with Marco Silva. Yeah. Um, yeah. Get a yeah. little link up with Hudson yeah. Odoi going down the left hand side. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just, yeah, just thinking of like managers really that kind of like I don't want him playing in a defensive team. You know what I mean? I want him to be on the ball, I want him to showcase his talent. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, no, mate, I, 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 I hear it. I mean, just whilst we're talking about young left backs, Ian Martin's massively impressed in pre-season. He's not actually played at left back at all uh, during the pre-season games. He's very much operated further up the pitch to, to great effect. Poch saying at this point in time, he's still he's very much part of the plans uh, going forward for the squad. Um, if Martin stays as part of the squad, do you, do you see him being just a, a bit like a Ruben, a bit like a Ruben in terms of being a utility player, so filling in further up the pitch when needed, and then obviously playing at left back as and when required? Do, do, is that kind of how you how you see it going? I think he's been kind of Poch's almost like Swiss Army knife this preseason. You know, he's kind of played in a few positions. He's played off the left. He's played off the right. You know, inverting quite a lot. You saw the goal against uh, Newcastle where Jackson scored. And it's a great through ball. Yeah, and, and, but if you look at the position, he was almost like a number 10, inverting from, from the right. So, But look, we want a player in that position, right? We want this like right wing slash 10 hybrid, whether it be Kudus or Elisa. Like, do you think Martin though. could do that? Um, I mean, based off pre-season, why not? But it's just whether you want to risk that going into the Premier League. I, I'm not sure. It's a, it's a big risk, that, isn't it? Like, I mean, there yeah, would be, be uproar if, if, if the club decided like, oh, by the way, we're not going to sign a Kudos or or or, an, or a Michael Elise. We're gonna we're gonna let uh, Martin be that backup sort of yeah. hybrid winger slash ten. I mean, I'm not saying he can't do it, but do you think that would be a big gamble? Yeah, it would. You know, I've also held, heard that he could still be sold as well. So um, I think we shouldn't sell him. I think he should go for a lot more money than like 20, 25 mil. But at the end of the day, like, if he's not going to play left back and Chilwell and Cucurella there, I mean, he's better than them or better than Cucurella anyway. So um, if he's not going to play there, though, and he's not going to get minutes at uh, this, you know, out on the wing on the sides, um, then where is he going to play? I mean, maybe loan him, but does he want to go out and loan again? Would you say Probably loan not. him out to maybe? I mean, Burnley obviously want him. Do you think a loan to they Burnley? Want to sign him, they don't, they yeah. want to sign him, so. I, I think just, permanently they want to sign him. I mean, it'd be interesting to see how he does against Fulham tomorrow night, and then obviously how he does against uh, Borussia Dortmund. But I mean, at the, at this point in time, Poch has been very clear, very transparent, very honest that he's in the plans right now. If he impresses in these next two games, he will be part of the plans. But it just depends what how he's going to be no, used within the squad. I, I don't think that's the case, though. I think it's more that if we sign someone, he's not then a part of the plans. Personally, yeah. Do you think so? Yeah, I think him saying for now is because we haven't signed that Kudos or that. I mean, if, I mean, if Kudos comes in, you can't see where Martin plays because he's not going to play no. in those in the wide areas and yeah. left backs he's pretty stocked back. up. Yeah, exactly. So, is it, this is what I don't like? Like, Kukurea, man, he should have been sold this window. It would have freed up a left back spot. Like, yeah, but mate, yeah. we weren't going to get any offers for him. 
Well, that's the thing. He's his performances last season have messed up this this you know potential Hall or, or Matson spot for me. So, well, it's the know, same. With, it's the same with Sterling as well, isn't it? Sterling has yeah. been shocking in this preseason. Yeah, then, then, then we have to. We're almost paying the price for paying the price almost for Kukurea, you know. So, yeah, um, it's disappointing, man. Like honestly, I just yeah, it, it's disappointing. I mean, bro, what have you what have you made just briefly before we move on? What have you made of the of the biz, of the window so far? I mean, obviously the outgoings fantastic, the incomings less so on the first team side of things. Exciting in terms of the youth recruitment drive, but I mean, what have you made of the window so far overall? As I was saying to you before we went live, mate, we what August? Uh, sorry, January, fucking hell, July 29th, Sorry, almost, <laughs> almost, almost in January, bro. <laughs> mate, Sweet. July. July yeah. 29th, bro, and the only player into the first team is Nicholas Jackson signed. Yes, Nkunku's come. Yes, Levi Colwell's back. But Nkunku was done in November and Colwell was our player anyway. So, like, how, what, how would you assess the window so far as we approach August and two weeks till the season begins? Two weeks tomorrow we play Liverpool. Well, you, you, I think you have to split into sections. I think you say the outgoings have been very, very, very good because we got a lot of outgoings gone and, you know, Hudson Adoy, Lukaku, Ziyech, they probably still need to go. But overall, I think the outgoings have been fantastic. Yes, we were helped a little bit with all like this Saudi revolution, but um at the end of the day, we've done very well on the outgoings. The incomings, however, I mean it's just Jackson looks like a very good signing, but yeah, we we've put all our eggs in the Kaiseido basket. And if we don't get Kaiseido, um, then you know, it, it's been pretty poor, to be honest with you. Um, I think. You know, Caicedo is the one coming into this window. Actually, let's not forget that we were supposed to get Ugarte and Caicedo. That was the original plan, right? So That was the plan, wasn't it? Yes, but but like, imagine like Lavia goes to Liverpool. I mean, maybe we don't need him now, but still, you know, coming into the window, Lavia, Caicedo, Ugarte, those were like the three high up on our list, you know? Um, and to not end up with any of them would just be like a catastrophe. So that's why I think, you know, Caicedo has to happen. Hopefully it does happen. Hopefully Caicedo starts pushing and maybe Brighton budge. Maybe it gets done for 90 instead of 100 million. But, yeah. you know, I, I think we've just put ourselves in the position now where we've negotiated for so long for Caicedo that, like, we almost can't back out now. We would just look like... I, I honestly feel we've just gone panicked by someone that we'd then regret. So, um, yeah. Uh, but, but, yeah, I, I think goalkeeper could have been improved as well. But, again, I think yeah. maybe Poch is potentially happy with Kepa um, at the moment. Well, he did. Um, well, he said so in those comments after the Newcastle game, didn't he? He said he was really yeah. pleased with him and he was a top-class goalkeeper. I mean, <laughs> who... Maybe, who maybe, he's, maybe he's just hyping him up, giving him confidence, but... Yeah, could... Um, yeah, mate, c mate yeah. C certainly could be, certainly could be. Before we move on to Kaiseido, guys, by the way, 173 of us locked in on my channel, guys. Only 53 likes. People, let's get let's get the likes up. We can easily get this to 100 likes again. Shouldn't be a problem. Don't freeload the content, guys. Just hover over that thumb button. Give it a little click. It massively helps out. Wouldn't bang on about it if it didn't help. So, yeah, guys, run the likes up. There's plenty of you in here that haven't smashed that like button. Run the likes up on Chelsea Fan TV as well. And, guys, if you're new around here and you haven't subscribed, we're on the way to 5,000 subscribers now. Prize draw uh, for the Chelsea shirt for the upcoming season will take place on Monday, guys. If you're not subscribed, you won't be in that draw and in with a chance of winning. So, guys, you need to subscribe to my channel to be in with a chance of winning a Chelsea shirt from the upcoming season. Hit the link in the chat. Subscribe to the channel. It would be greatly appreciated. Uh, bro, let's move on to Moises Caicedo briefly. The most boring thing to talk about, but I suppose we need to address it. A fourth bid went in on... Thursday, was it? Thursday or Friday, whenever it was. Went in a couple of days ago, roughly. And £80 million, no add-ons, or 75 plus 5, whoever you want to believe it, £80 million is, 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 is what it was. Um, follows up bids of 60, 65 and £70 million. Um, I was under the impression, bro, that the whole point of us having these intense conversations with Brighton for so long was to avoid us doing loads of fucking bids and being uh, involved in a protracted, very public transfer saga. But that's exactly what we've got. What have you made of the way that the club, the directors, whoever it is, Win Stanley, Lawrence Stewart, have kind of handled this deal? Because surely we could have ascertained pretty quickly that Brighton were going to not be prepared to budge on that hundred million pound valuation. Yet we went in with sixty as a first offer. Yeah, I mean, there's so many like points to this Caicedo saga. Like, I think Chelsea have been playing off the fact that. They, Brighton, promised him that he could leave and there was supposed to be this sort of pact or whatever. 
Um, yeah, you can't Chelsea be doing packed. Yeah, <laughs> I mean Ch- Chelsea have been, I think, playing off that in negotiations. But at the end of the day, Brighton are the seller club. You know, you can't go in with 60, 65, 70 million pounds. Like those are all less than the January and, bids. And you know what? It, you know what it is. It's like it's fine if you actually do that, right? It's pretty normal. But don't take fifteen days or ten days between the bids. That's what's yeah. frustrating me. It's like. And especially because, you know, from my understanding, they've been talking pretty much every day. So hey, it's mad. How, and, how, and face-to-face talks in America as well after the how, Brighton game. How have Chelsea only gone? Like, how, I just don't know. How is 75 million pounds or 80 million pounds a highest bid in like two months? Like, I'm not saying like, we, we should have start, We should have like, maybe started million, at 70. Like, we should have started at 70. Yeah, yeah. Like, start. you should start at 70 plus 5 million because, adults. Because like, 70, you know I mean? 70 was rejected in January by, yeah, from Arsenal. From Arsenal. And, yeah. and again... So they were know, never going to accept 70 in the summer from us. So I don't understand no. why we even went in with 70. Well, Caicedo's camp thinks that basically... Um, but, like, but their camp basically thinks that 80 million pounds... Like total is is a good is a good fee, like a fair fee to let him go. That's that's what I've been hearing anyway. So I think Chelsea have been playing off that fact the whole time. Like, okay, let's try seventy, let's try sixty five. If Caicedo's camp think eighty is is fair enough, but it's not really what Caicedo's camp think. It's it's what Brighton think. Well, exactly. I mean, day. wasn't there wasn't there a report in the Times yesterday, mate, that was saying that you know uh, Caicedo's agent and his camp and whatnot are not happy with Brighton's hundred million pound price and they're gonna meet with yeah. them to try and get them to lower it. I mean, yeah. do you think they're gonna have any chance of doing that? I mean Tony Bloom, the owner, he sets the price. What he says goes pretty much. Do you think they've got any chance of of getting him down? But well, I don't think Caicedo's helping himself because he's playing football. He's not doing a Wesley for fo- like remember the Fafana saga, right? He, Le- he was in, he was in the stands for a Leicester game when he sat yeah, and watched yeah, one he refused but, to play. But Leicester were being very much similar how Brighton are have been throughout this whole saga. They were saying like eighty five. I think it started at eighty five million, if I remember. Yeah, because we wanted and, to avoid a world record fee, and we did. Yeah, and then but then it went down to like eighty after a couple of weeks, and then Fafana started pushing. He missed training, and I'm not advocating for this behaviour, by the way. But if players want to do that to join our club, then that's do it. unfortunately <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, like that's what has to be sometimes like, done sometimes. So like. If Caicedo doesn't turn up to training or he doesn't, you know, he's, he just like he just starts behaving badly or like has an attitude, then I'm sure De Zerbi's going to be like, right, look, he's clearly unhappy. Like, let's do something. But at the moment, Caicedo is playing the preseason games. He's still smiling, you know, uh, and, you know, why would Brighton be like, OK, well, you know, clearly he's fine here. You know, he kicked off in January and nothing happened. So let's just say 100 million or he'll be fine staying. Look, look, he did it in January. So let's try it again. But. So yeah, for me, Caicedo needs needs to push more. Um, personally, I, mean, do you, I don't bro, need do you think? Else. I mean, I've got. A, I mean, this is a. I mean, it's not really. Well, it's kind of. A, I suppose it's a slight theory, not exactly groundbreaking, but I feel that Chelsea are almost playing like quite a dangerous game of poker, where they're hoping that Brighton are going to think actually let's take a little bit less money because that's better. It's le- better to have less money than keep an unhappy player against his will. So do you think Chelsea could be bargaining on the fact that Brighton won't want an unhappy player in the camp for a second season running? Because he wanted to leave in January, he put a statement out basically saying goodbye to the fans and then sign the new contract. I think what I would say on Caicedo as well is that ho- however it's happened, him, his reps or whatever, you know, by signing a new contract when you want to leave and there being no release clause for you to be able to leave, that's really poor. And, you know, and you can't rely on a gentleman's agreement in football that you're going to be sold because those things just don't exist. So I think that's a mistake on his part and his and his camp's part, not to insist on a release clause. And secondly, mate, do you think Chelsea could be playing a little bit of a poker game with Brighton in terms of them thinking, actually, do you know what? It's better for us to get a little bit less money than we wanted than to have another unhappy pl- to have an unhappy Caicedo in and around the camp on a daily basis. I mean, what what are your thoughts on that? Um, I think that Brighton have, I think Brighton probably had an agreement with Caicedo, but as you said, it's it probably wasn't in writing, and I think Caicedo's camp have been kind of silly, like you said, not to add a release clause or something like get it in the contract because. At the end of the day, Brighton, you know, they can change their mind if, if it's if it's legal. You know, they can just say yeah. like, "Oh, look at look at." What I would say as well, just quickly, mate. Sorry, is that as as frustrating as it is from our point of view? 
Brighton are well within their rights to ask for the money they're asking for. They're going off the barometer of the Enzo Fernandez deal. They're going off Declan Rice, etc. Now, you can argue about whether they should be using those deals as a barometer for Moises Caicedo. I would say that the move for Chouameni is probably more representative around that 80, 85 million pounds mark. I think it's more representative. But Brighton, you can see, are well within their rights. Declan Rice, thought, yes, he's more experienced, a bit older, played more games of football. But with one year left on the contract, yes, a bit of English tax and all that sort of thing, going for well over 100 million pounds. Moises Caicedo at 21, more years on the contract, a lot of potential. Um, I think they're. Do you think they're well within their rights to ask for this money? Because 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 I certainly do. And if it was Chelsea in this position, I'd expect our club to do the same. Yeah, I do. To be honest, I you know I know Rice is uh, like a bit more of a physical profile, but in terms of a football player, I don't see much between them at all. I mean, if you look at the overall stats as well, like Caicedo is very like honestly a like, very very good player. Like honestly, I, I reckon you could. Yeah, basically what I'm trying to say is like if Rice is worth 105 million, then so is Caicedo. Like let's be honest yeah. with you. Like there's, I don't think Rice is better at you know. Um, many other things to be honest with you if if anything like but you know you could have that debate and that would take ages going through everything well, exactly yeah and everything. but but the same like kai Saylor, you know he's yeah yeah i, I think also i think he's bright enough uh right to demand that um and i think they're right to think he's worth that as well like look at their performances like look at his performances for brighton i mean even last night, bro, against Newcastle, like Mate, people were guessing up on the timeline, weren't they? He was playing yeah, I, really I, I well. I found it hilarious. I found it hilarious. Like even our own fans, bro, were telling me like the whole week, oh, don't pay hundred million pounds. And then they're gassing him up. These guys are saying he's worth hundred million pounds because they've watched him. I was like, did you not watch him last season, bro? <laughs> like, are you mad? I've said the whole time he was worth paying hundred million pounds for, but yeah, yes. let, let, let's hope we don't get to that stage because at the end of the day, we have been then, I guess, bullied by Brighton. But, but it's better to be bullied and get what you want than exactly, be bullied and, yeah, and not like, come away with anything. Like exactly. I'm quite happy to be embarrassed or mugged off exactly. by Brighton yeah, in the yeah, market. We won't be. I guarantee we won't be embarrassed in the sense of if oh, we, we sign guys, him for well, that. We get the player. How is it embarrassing? It's not embarrassing for us. We got what we well, wanted. It's, it's only embarrassing if he doesn't perform. He's going to perform. So I don't see the problem. Like He's not yeah. going to plot. He's not a cooker, I can assure you. Like, he's not. He's not going to happen. It's not no, going to happen. Bro, I absolutely agree. I mean, just to round out this little segment, mate, uh, how, how, how do you see this concluding? The annoying thing is that we're probably not going to see another bid for at least a week because these. I, I, I don't understand why it takes so long to prepare a bid, but th this is the way it seems to be. Um, he's not going to play any pre-season games for us. I guess the big question is, mate, Two things, really. What do you see Chelsea's next move being, next bid? I think this fifth bid has to be the take it or leave it bid, in, in, in my opinion. And what do you see that being? And secondly, do you think he will have him in time for the Liverpool game? Because the clock's ticking on that as well. well. We'll have someone for the Liverpool game. I don't know who it will be, but I think the last bid will probably be... I, I think we might do a bid of £90 million total. I, I think personally, I, I think that'll be the take I think it or leave that's it. That's fair as well. I think that'll be the take it or leave it. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know what's interesting is like I know, like if if we leave the deal, like everyone's gonna like go mental, and I will too. But there could be a case of like if we leave the deal, like say Brighton reject our next bid, we leave the deal for like a couple of days. Like we we say to Brighton, we say to Casado's camp, yeah, we left negotiations. Brighton have been too difficult. Or whatever, then like Kaiseido, knowing that he's not going to get that move, because at the moment he probably still thinks he's going to get the move, right? Yeah, well, he's desperate he, for the move, isn't he? Exactly. But knowing he won't get the move, if that happens, then he might go crazy and just like, you know, post public statements. And then Brighton <laughs> might turn around with us and contact us a few days later when we've left the deal, saying, okay, look, we want to do the deal now. And then it might come back on. So, I mean, you know, that, that's that's the only you, saving grace if we do leave the deal for me. That Kaiseido might think still, oh, fuck this. Sort do of you thing. think the deal's going to happen though? Because I I I I don't want to change my mind because I've maintained all along this deal will happen. I don't want to flip flop between it. I'm just going to stick with my guns. <laughs> and I still think it happens. But it's, it's, it's even for me, I'm <laughs> even for me, bro. I'm starting. I every day that goes by is another day, and I'm just like, oh shit, is this getting a little bit more unlikely now? I don't really know. How, yeah. how do you see this concluding? Do you still think we get him ultimately? Because for me, it would be, if we didn't get him after committing all this time to it, being a number one target, it's highly embarrassing for us as a club. We've massively let down Pochettino. We've massively let down Enzo Fernandez, And 
We look embarrassing. The directors look a disgrace if we don't get this deal done for the amount of time that we spent doing it. And whoever else were to come in as an alternative, which we'll get onto in a sec, we don't we is, is a step down in quality and it's gonna be a problem for us. I mean, ultimately, mate, do you do you see this deal getting done? Um, I've said no for the last two weeks. I'm gonna say no again. Yeah. Um because like until I see like for me, our bids have just been really unserious. Like if yeah. we put in a like if we put in a 90 million pound bid, I say look, fair enough. Like and yeah, like and then you know if they say no, then you know, fair enough. But Still, I might get to the 90 million thing and just say, like, well, if they want 10 million pounds more, then you know, it's probably worth it, man. For the years, like, we paid it over. Yeah, when when, do you know what's mad, right? Is when is when you're when we're paying this much money, right? When we're prepared to spend 80, 80 plus million or whatever, what difference when you're spending that much money? Why do clubs and we've done it, we've done it before in the past. Why are we always and Marina used to do it all the time? Why are we fucking about over an extra five or ten million when we're already committing to spending so much money? I, 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 yeah, I, 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 I don't get it. No, I don't get it either. But I guess it's just optics and that type of thing. But I, I don't care about the optics when we desperately need this player. So, yeah, I, I, yeah. I agree. I mean, bro, let's presume that the worst case scenario does happen and we don't get him. What do you think the alternatives are? Because, that, because <laughs> this is the thing. There, there is no like uh, unless we just use that young kid, which would obviously be a very big risk. Like I, I just don't know who there is out there. Like it would be a massive downgrade. We can't go and get Lavia, you know, because Liverpool are probably going to sign him. Like, yeah, who do we go and get? Like, I'm not saying there's not people out there. Of course, there is. There's but like people out there, but, I mean, it is, it'd be a massive what, downgrade. Do you think in you my go, like a Kefram Toram? Do you think? But uh, an Amrabat, we could suddenly be in the market for him. Do you think maybe a Manu Kone or something like that? I mean, there's options out there, but with the greatest respect, the the guy, the, this this next list down or whatever, whoever they are, yeah. the, the, the difference in quality between them and Kaiseido is so big. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, we 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 was talking uh, me and Alex Goldberg and the Blue Dodge. We were talking about this on Space last night. This exact conversation about like if it doesn't happen, who would you go and get? And um, it's a problem, you know, Alex, it? brought, Alex brought up the point of like, maybe we go and get like an older guy who is almost like a 1A or a 1B and then him and Santos share minutes. But I'm not, too, I'm not too up for that, man. Like this position is so important for me um, and we need to get the best out of Enzo. So I think Caicedo allows that. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, I just hope we get it done. Um, I understand this weekend is going to be important as well. So yeah, Brighton are in Atlanta. Um, like well, Chelsea, we're in Washington, aren't we? Yeah, we are, but yeah. they were they were in. Oh Atlanta. yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I think something between maybe Friday or today. I don't know when we're moving, but yeah, maybe something was going to happen because yeah, I was told that this weekend was going to be quite big. So maybe something will come out, you know, Monday, Tuesday, or Sunday. I don't know, but it's got to end soon because this has been going on for ages and yeah. it's, it's boring and it's tiring. And uh, I know journalists who I speak to feel the same as well. Yeah, no, bro, I, I, I hear it. Hopefully, one way or another, we get a conclusion to this before before the start of the season. We 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 simply have to, guys. Still, plenty of you tuned in. Still, over five hundred and fifty of us locked in across both channels, guys. One hundred and sixty four of us on my channel. Still, only on eighty three likes, guys. Let's get this to a hundred likes now. Only need another sixteen more, guys. So hover over that thumb, give it a click. It massively helps out. It spreads the content, uh, gets more people tuned in. So please do click that thumb button guys and make sure you subscribe to the channel as well guys remember if you have not subscribed make sure you do because you'll be in with a chance of winning a Chelsea shirt of your choice in the draw live on Monday's stream we're on the road to 5k now guys so please do hit the link in the chat there's 500 over 550 of us in here as I said and there's definitely a good chunk of you that aren't subscribed so if you could please click the link in the chat subscribe to the channel it would be greatly greatly appreciated and big up yourselves in the chat as always guys uh Pius, let's talk about um sort of attacking midfielders hybrid players that we need um rayan Cherky deal supposedly i think nathan gissing was saying on goldberg's byline podcast i think that's where i saw it um that uh, reportedly rayan Cherky to chelsea is off amid concerns over his attitude um what are your thoughts on that? Is that true? Do we think that is the case? Because I think the Cherky links have, have dried up quite a lot recently. So I was like, we're talking about Cherky. Yeah, I think I've seen it on Gissing saying it on, 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 yeah. on the Byline podcast. Concerns about his attitude. The links to Cherky have dried up a little bit. Is that move now off? 
According to him, yeah, I've not heard anything about it for quite a while. I think, well, I know the scouts liked him a lot. You know, he was very, very high up on recommendation to Colin Stanley and Lawrence Stewart. But yeah, I think the deal is probably not going to happen now. I, I didn't I had my doubts around it, even when there was a lot of links, just because like, I don't really think he's a potch type player, to be honest with you. Like, no. kind of similar to Joao Felix in terms of, you know, very good and on the ball. You know, pure footballers, really, skills and that type of thing. But they're not the best work rate rise. So, um, yeah, when, when Nathan Gissing says attitude as well, I don't necessarily think that means, like, character. I think that may just be, like, off the ball, like, you know, during the games type thing. So like Poor work rate yeah. and, and things like that. Yeah, like, but at the same time, though, like... That could be coached out of you, surely, at that Yeah, age. and at the same time, like, it, it's it's almost healthy to have one of those, like, pure footballers in your squad as well that can just make something out of nothing, you know? And I really would like Shirky, but, you know, the other options, Kudus and Elise, obviously Elise depend on his injuries, but I like those two as well. Again, really, really good from the recruitment team. No Gabri Vega, it looks like, which is fantastic. That's gone quiet as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, any one of those three, Shirky being the least like this, would, would be really good for us, in my opinion. I mean, out of this, the, the Shirky looks unlikely, but let's talk about uh, Michael Elise and... Uh, um, Mohamed Kudos. Elise, again, pluses for him. Creative. I think he had 11 Premier League assists last season. I think that was in a top four or top five in the league. Doesn't get as many goals as you would perhaps like from a player like that. So that would be something for him to improve upon. Great technique. Good set piece taker as well. Uh, knows the Premier League, as I was saying. Kudos, I think, fits for me personally. I think he fits the Pochettino system more. He's got Champions League experience. He's a bit more versatile. Can play 10, can play wide right, can even play false nine as well. Um I think he fits the team better. I I personally would be happy with either of these guys. Kudos, for me, would be the preference. I mean, for you out of those two, I mean, there's pros and cons to both, but who do you think fits the Pochettino system better? Because for me, it's Kudos. Um, out of Elisa and, and Kudos. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting. Uh, I think Elisa's work rate is actually not as bad as people make out. Mm. Um, I think quite a few Palace fans actually said, like, when there was links uh, um, on the timeline, I saw something, there was a few of them saying, like, no, like, you don't know, clearly not watched him, like, he does work hard, so, um, yeah, I, I don't know who's the best fit, because, like, Elise, he hasn't really played as a 10 since Reading, um, yeah. I think he's played eight a couple of times for Palace, but then Kudus hasn't played much on the right, but he's played more of a t as a 10. So you're kind of choosing, like, what do you almost need more, I guess? It, you know, a pure number 10 who can also play on the right or a pure on the right who can also maybe play as a 10. So what, what, uh, what, what do you think we need? What do you think um, we need? I, I, would, right. I, would, I would say more of a 10, to be honest with you. Yeah. But at the same time, though, like, if Madueke gets injured, then we, <laughs> we need a right wing, like, more than anything. So... Yeah, yeah I mean, I mean Sterling's, <laughs> Sterling's the only other choice, really, on that side, isn't he? And he's been... He's yeah. been, he's then, been then, then on the left, he's only then got Mudrick. So, yeah, you know. no, it, it, it is a problem. I mean, both deals are gonna, you would think, would cost a similar amount of money. Kudos around the forty million pound mark. Uh, Elise reportedly has a thirty-five million pound release clause, although there's some mixed reports on whether that's actually still active or not. Um, I mean, what, what do you think the hold up for a deal like this is? I mean, kudos personal terms of virtually all agreed. What do you think the hold-up is on putting in a bid for Mohamed Kudos? Do you think this is all because of the Caicedo stuff? Or like, do you think we're still uh, waiting? I mean, yeah, what, the Caicedo deal. Yeah? So you don't think we're going to see yeah, any other Kaiseido... signings until that Caicedo deal's done? No, because I think we want to see how much we've got to spend, like how much that Caicedo deal lands on. And yeah. that's on the assumption that we actually like do, you know, pay money for him. Like if we pull out, then, you know, we've got, we basically only spend 30 mil when we've made over 200. So, it's yeah, quite well, plus, well, and, and plus the actual yeah. original budget we had anyway before all these sales. Yeah, I think get Kaiseido done, and then I think there may be like a a bit more of a faster negotiation with with the other clubs because Ajax are really not difficult to deal with. Like they're just not. No, but didn't they? Not. Didn't they say though that they wanted a quick resolution to to the, to, to Kudos and Edson Alvarez's future so they could get replacements? Yeah, That's and both. I think. I think there is, you know, there is probably work going on behind the scenes already. So I think we just have to wait. I think, you know, I know we've said next week for ages, but 
next week is actually in August, and we're getting very close to the to the. Uh, to yeah, the, it is. The next mid-week date, so. is midweek, fucking August, isn't it? Jesus. Yeah. I mean, ideally, ideally, if they're not going to play, you know, next week against Dortmund, the new signings, then they need at least a week of training with Poch. Like, otherwise, for me, you re- like if you, I mean, you could just say yeah, shove Kaiseido in, but like, you you kind of need that like. A, like at least a week of like talking and learning with Poch, don't you? Like get the acclimatized to the system. Oh yeah, yeah, you, uh, mate, hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, yeah, I, ho- hopefully one of those two guys comes in. I mean, if a kudos does come in or an Elise comes in, you'd imagine that. I mean, what does that mean for Chukwemeka? What does that mean for Conor Gallagher? I mean, Gallagher's probably only going to go if a suitable bid comes in for him. Mm-hmm. Bids could definitely come in for him, but you bring in a kudos type player. And that suddenly, like, you think, well, Carney doesn't really play in the pivot much. And then, you know, it's another player that could play that number 10 role that he may also play. So if a kudos comes in, mate, do you think, I mean, Gallagher really needs to be sold then, doesn't he? I, honestly, I find it, you know, I'm not even going to say what I find that bit. Rejecting £39 million for Gallagher. Like, are you having me on, bro? Honestly, that is... They want, they want 50 uh, mil, don't we? <laughs> that's, that's outrageous. If we get fifty million pounds for Gallagher, that is honestly the sale of the last five windows, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I don't know. Maybe people rate him higher than me, but I just we got find... a forty. Well, we got forty-five million pound bid. That uh, is, from, that is crazy Gen- from Everton, didn't we? That is crazy that we've rejected these bids. In my opinion, absolutely nuts. That is money you should take all day for a player like Gallagher. Well, it's pure profit Surely. as well. I mean, yeah. Like, but you would think though that he'd have to. Gallagher would have to be sold then if Kudos comes in because again we're then suddenly we're yeah. way too stocked. I mean, and that's what Poch was going on about, wasn't it? You know about an about this about warning of an unbalanced squad because as good as the squad is and as much as we've trimmed it down, he said that you know we're on a twenty nine man squad at the moment uh, out on out out on tour that needs to go down to twenty three twenty four. That's another six players that need to be removed from that squad, whether sold or going on loan. So there's still some big decisions that do need to be made. Um, I mean. Do you, do you worry about how unbalanced the squad still is? Um, we got, no, like, we've, got think, four, we've got four. No. We've got four players that can play left back. We haven't really got. We've got no. We've got a very threadbare midfield at this point in time. Um, it is obviously the window's still got a bit of time to run, so it's not a disaster in that in that point. But do you, could you understand where he was coming from and and, his, and those potential c- concerns? Yeah, I do, but I'm not too concerned. Like, I think the squad will get trimmed down and, and we'll get the number of players that he wants in the squad. I just don't know if... Like, I, I hope the incomings are also, you know, going to happen as well. I, I've been less concerned with the outgoings. I think the low moves like Angelo and Marrera, you know, they'll get done. Um, also hints that the Strasbourg loan for Angelo has maybe already agreed, so... Yeah, I think um, that's going to be done, yeah. Yeah, you know, we need to get Lukaku and Ziyech out the door, but at the end of the day, like if push comes to shove, we'll have to just accept something and just send them on loan, you know. So there's only a certain amount of time that you can ask for fees and that type of thing. You you probably get to like desperate measures soon and just cut the squad down because Poch wants it cut down. You know, we we yeah. need to make fast decisions and and not do these long negotiations. No, nah, bro, I, I, I hear it, but I just wanted to round out by talking about centre backs. Obviously, we know that Wesley Fofana is going to miss best part of the season. Reports saying that. Trevor Chalaber is up for sale. Um, he's happy to stay. Um, reports linking us with Mark Gare here as well from Palace. I mean, for me, like it doesn't make any sense for us to sell Chalaber to then go and spend most of that money on Gare here. Now, I know we've got a sell-on clause or whatever, so it actually works out a bit cheaper than the actual fifty million pounds. It would be. It would be. It would be less with the sell-on clause and all that sort of stuff. I get it. But for me, I just think we're creating a problem for ourselves for no reason. Chalaber doesn't want to leave the club. He's good enough to play the role that he's going to have in the squad this season. I don't understand why we're even entertaining this. And I think Bashir Humphreys has done well in pre-season. If the club decide it's right and he doesn't go out on loan, then he can fill that fifth centre-back squad role in the squad quite quite nicely. And I don't see the need for us to go and get another one. Pochettino only wanted four centre-backs in the first place. So I, I don't really understand why we're even contemplating selling Gallagher to give ourselves a headache of trying to sign an, another centre back when we don't need to. I mean, what, what, what do you make of all the Chalaber and Gaehi stuff? I mean, do you think do you, can you see it happening? I mean, why do you think we're even? Why do you think we're looking to do it? Um, I don't know. It's interesting because I, I rate Chalaber, but I don't rate him as highly as others. Um, if Silver was to get injured or 
phased out. I don't know if I can rely on Chalaba every week in the Premier League. For me personally, no. Um, but Paddy Ashu and Colwell couldn't play as a partner. Yeah, though. well, they could, but there's been, you know, this is almost like a fan like thing where we're just almost yeah. like making it like we've not. This isn't any. This isn't hasn't even been a possibility of a reality in. Yeah, like we haven't seen it, or like we, it's not no. been discussed in an article, or you know, something like that. Like, it's not yeah, yeah. News. like it's just something that the fans have almost thought of, but obviously it's not like unrealistic. But like, will that happen? We don't know, so I don't think we can just go off the basis. Oh, we don't even have a centre back because Baddy Shield might play right centre back. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, so, but at the same time, for me, if we sell Chalaba, it has to be a, like a big upgrade. I don't think Guy is a big upgrade. Um, Do you think he's an upgrade? Yeah, I think he's an upgrade. He's, he's also a, you know, some say, oh, he's some would say pretty he's much up. within within a season at Palace, wasn't he? Yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily think that translates to leader at Chelsea, but at the same time, you know, he is he's a good defender. He's good on the ball, but Chalab is pretty underrated as well. So, what well, I would say he's an upgrade, but I don't say like he's worth spending fifty mil on. Like that's ridiculous in my opinion. But we'll see what happens. Um, I don't really see the need to sell Chalaba. Uh, to be honest with no, you, well, but... in, in, yeah, I mean, in, unless he wants to go, but it's quite clear that he doesn't. Clear he, he, doesn't, he, doesn't no, he, he doesn't want to go. So, I, and like with and like, if he did want to go, right? And I mean, what do you think a fair price is? Because I look at him; he's got loads of years left on his contract. He's contracted until twenty twenty eight. Signed a new deal back in November with an option for twenty twenty nine. So he's contracted for the next five years, definitely, possibly even six. I find it hard to believe that. From November to July, the owners have suddenly changed their mind on offering on, on him signing a long term deal and committing his future to the club. To within a few months' time, then then deciding actually we want to sell him. Like I, I I'd find that hard to compute. I wouldn't really under don't really understand that. Um, but you know, twenty four years of age, versatile. You know, I I I don't think it's ridiculous to be asked to to be asking for fifty million pounds for Chera Chalaba. Do you, do you think that's outrageous? Yeah, I think that's outrageous. But, 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 but yeah. do you not get my point, though, in terms of... Oh, like... I know, like, the thing is, like, our fans will probably look at Gallagher and say, well, if he's 50 million, then so is Chalaber. But Gallagher's always had, like, this... I don't know what it is, and maybe it's just because of his work rate. Like, he's almost had, like, this... For me, he's got an extra 20 million on his price tag just because of, like, the profile he is, how hard yeah, he yeah. works and stuff. But for me, I'd sell Chalaber for around... Probably around 30 million, I think, would be a fair price. Really? Even even with the yeah. even with the years left on a contract and, 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 and the potential and all that sort of thing? Do you think do you think 30 million is, is, is all right? Yeah, I, I also don't think we'd get more than that from anyone. So that almost goes into my thinking as well. Um, oh. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, how, how do you see the centre-back thing playing out? Um, I, I'm good... I don't know. I'm going to say we won't sign one. I think I think we'll stay as the same as we've got it right now, and maybe Humphreys will go on loan. That's what I, that's what I would say. But at the end of the day, Chelsea are unpredictable, and I know they're working on like opportunistic signings this window as well. So if something presents itself where we think you know that's that's quite a good deal, almost like this one today, right, with this young yeah, player, yeah, yeah. Then, then I, I mean... think that Chelsea might might go and do something for a centre back, but. Uh, it all depends on Chalaba, doesn't it? If Chalaba, yeah. if we if we get a good bid for Chalaba, then he, we're going to sign a centre back. So yeah, no, yeah. I, I hear it. I mean, bro, what do you what do you think of this De Sassi at Monaco, who 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 frequently does get links? Do you think De Sassi is decent? Obviously, Lawrence Stewart probably knows him. Badia Shile will obviously know him know him as well. Um, do you, it, it, from what you've heard, from what you might know, is there is there any truth in? Like us being interested in in, in De Sassi because I know I think United are potentially interested as well. I mean, what what have you heard r regards to him? Uh, we did, we definitely had interest. I don't know if it's still interest now, but yeah, we definitely have had interest. Um, I've not watched him personally, to be honest with you. I didn't watch Badia Shield personally. I didn't. You no, know, I, I didn't, didn't see much of either. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, I guess chemistry wise, him and Badia Shield in the same squad would be really good, but. Again, I, I can't. I can't really judge, man. Like centre backs, uh, I don't really watch a lot of centre backs. It's not a position I like watching, to be honest with you. I prefer yeah, to yeah. Watch the centers, but um, you know, there's, there's a few interesting ones out there. Um, I think one of my writers did a piece for my website. It was mentioned. Uh, you know, we we said this before, like Diamande from Sporting. Sutler, yeah, he, he's... Who, might be, who might be going to Ajax. Uh, you know, there, there's a few young centre backs out there that we could we could sign. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I guess I guess the interesting one with Gerhi is obviously 
he was already at Chelsea, so he knows the club. He knows yeah, the surroundings. Cobham, didn't he? Yeah, and he's also you know had two. Is it two? Did he? Good, did he? Two did two he play, so. Did he play for us at all? First team appearances. I I, I didn't yeah, think he, played, he, played, he, he played did. In, he played in the FA Cup against Man United one time. I want to but say. He didn't play in the league though. No, I don't think so. No. No. Yeah. Uh, I, I was pretty sure he didn't. Uh, bro, last five minutes or so, I just wanted to quickly touch on goalkeepers. We know Salina's Sl- gone out on loan. Um, obviously, uh, men, reportedly Mike Menyan too expensive for Chelsea, uh, depending on what you believe. Uh, Anana was too expensive as well, although I find that hard to believe given the price that he's gone for. Um, what do you see happening with a goalkeeper? Because at this point in time, we've got Kepa and we've got Bettinelli as second choice, along with Cummings, Beach and all, and all those kind of development academy goalkeepers. Um, what do you see What do you see happening with a goalkeeping situation? Because there's not really been any links with any goalkeepers for a while. You look at Mama Dashvili, Trubin at Shakhtar has been linked as well. Um, Bayern are in talks with David Raya. Um, Tuchel's talent ID shining through again. Um, and... I mean, yeah, bro, what, what do you think on the on the goalkeeper front? Because there's not really been any news on it for a while. And I think it's clear we're not going to get a number one now. It's going to be the the way the club word it, someone that can challenge and provide competition for Kepa. Um, how, how, how do you see the goalkeeping situation going in this window? Because it doesn't really seem to be going anywhere right now. Well, I think we'll sign someone very quickly and it will come out of nowhere. Um, I think they're probably trying to identify who to go for right now. And then it'll probably be a cheap deal. Um, I still hedge my bets on the Valencia goalkeeper coming in. It's my dash Billy. He's six, is he? Is he massive? Yeah, he's huge. I know they've scouted him a lot, so I would I would hedge my bets on him. But you know, they they also scouted Trubin at the under twenty ones. Um, I'm not a massive fan personally, um, but yeah, I think I think we'll sign someone. But I don't know I don't know when it will be. I like mean, I just think we... it'll almost be like out of the blue. Like oh, Chelsea have now got the goalkeeper to compete. Yeah, with sort of thing like. I mean, I look at someone like Trubin. Obviously, he's at the under twenty ones. Obviously, he's clearly a talented goalkeeper. But do we need another young goalkeeper? I know he's a bit older than Slanina, but surely Slanina is our young prospect, as it were. Well, and maybe this... they want to. Like, maybe they want. Like, I have heard that the plan is for like to sign someone. That what they were looking at as a plan um, was like sign someone young now who can like overtake next season and be like the number one or like the season after sorry so in 24 25 sell Kepa next summer and then have that new goalkeeper and Stanina so both two young goalies like both like find it out but yeah me, me, yeah, me, they, they me, may me. also go down like the experience route and get a stop gap or something I'm not sure but that was a plan internally at like a few weeks ago at least I mean would you would you, would you take because I've thought about this stop gap route a little bit would you take Kayla Navas for like a year no no, no? I, I said yes until I asked him one of my Nottingham Forest mates. Uh, yeah. And he was like, no, trust me, he's been really average for us. Like, he's not good enough for you. So <laughs> I, I'd say no. I was interested at one point, but yeah, no, I apparently mean, he made of... a bunch of mistakes for them. Yeah, I mean, like, you look at like the other vet... reflexes and stuff nowadays. Yeah. I mean, you look at other veteran shot stoppers that could be a stop guy. There's not many of them. We're not going to sign David De Gea. We're not going to sign Hugo Lloris. Uh, obviously, Kaelin Alice is another one which we probably aren't going to sign. So, yeah, there's not there's there's not that many options out there. I mean, uh, people in the chat always go on about Diogo Costa at Porto, but the release clause is massive for him. And if Anana was deemed too expensive and Menyan was deemed too expensive, I, you, I can't see Chelsea going to spend sixty odd million quid on uh, on on Di- Diogo Costa uh, as a number one goalkeeper, but I'd be very surprised if that happened. Can you? Could you see Costa happening at all in goal? Uh, no, no, no. no. He, he'd be too expensive. I think we would have got Anana if we wanted someone in that sort of price range. I think Anana would probably have been cheaper as well. Yeah, I mean Anana in the end is going to cost about 42, 43 million pounds. I mean, just lastly on him, bro. How disappointed are you that we didn't really follow through with our interest? Do you think we pulled out because he was too expensive, or do you think we pulled out because? Uh, we changed our mind or we found out that he only wanted United and we didn't want to be sort of embarrassed as such by him rejecting us. I mean, for, for, have you heard anything? Uh, what, what what are your thoughts as to why we retracted our and our interest? Um, I think the nego- I think the negotiation that we had with Inter a few weeks ago, if you remember, I think we like met them over like Koulibaly, Lukaku and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anana. It was several weeks ago now. I don't think that went very well, did it? Because we, we refused to loan Koulibaly and we said... Lukaku only on a permanent so I think since then and almost like the factor as well like Poch 
you know, and the goalkeeper coach. I think the goalkeeper coach, Tony Jimenez, he knows Kepa personally, so I think they were just more well, yeah. happy to work with him. And, you know, also, like, Kepa's paid as, a, as you know, a number one, and Anana will be paid as a number one. Like, we don't want two goalies on high wages. So, yeah, but I'm definitely disappointed, man. I, I wanted him for sure. Yeah, I think he would have been great for us, mate. Just very last thing, bro. Um, a lot of comments in the chat. Uh, any update on shirt sponsorship or anything like that? Because, you know, we're what? Two weeks tomorrow is the first game of the season. I would have thought something might be announced after the US tour. I don't I don't really know. Uh, I think we are uh, we are in conversations with with multiple sponsors. I think I saw that somewhere. Maybe Ben Jacobs was saying that uh, a few days back. I can't remember. Um, what's, what's the latest with a shirt sponsor? Can we expect one soon? I mean, what, what, what do you know, mate? Uh, I would say keep an eye out on uh, London's first underscore on Twitter. I'm trying to get who they're going to go for, but um, yeah, I've got I've got someone who's very well connected with like the business side of Chelsea. So uh, I put something out on my personal account the other day about we was close to getting a trading partner, and that came out a day later. So, oh, it was a crypto trading partner, wasn't it? Um, I don't know who they are. It's like TMGM or something. Yeah, um, just quickly on on these yeah. little deals, mate. Do you think that? I mean, I'm not saying we're going to run sponsorless this season, but the fact that we've got in deals that we didn't have before, so this trading partner thing that came out the other day, this deal with Amman Air, we never didn't have a travel, we didn't have an airline sponsor before, we didn't have a, a hotel partnership. Do you think with those sort of three new deals that that could replace the shirt money for a season maybe? I mean, do, do you think we'll uh, definitely get a sponsor? Yeah, we'll definitely get a sponsor. There's, there's active talks going on, so yeah, I think we'll definitely get a sponsor. Yeah, I mean, I I'm, I'm just so, any names yet. Yeah, no, that's fair. I'm just so gutted we're not going to be able to buy the sponsorless shirt. I thought they were. I honestly thought they were going to sell that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I saw someone there selling them in America somewhere because one of my followers had one. And I was yeah, like, mate, I, 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 I've that. seen people on. I've seen people wearing them. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. I, I, I don't know, bro, but yeah, seems like a good place to round this one out, guys. Uh, Pius, thanks so much, time. Uh, thanks so much for your time as always, bro. Greatly appreciated, guys. If you're under a rock, uh. Don't know what what Pice does anything or does or anything, mate. Uh, where's the best place for them to go? London's first underscore on Twitter. Uh, I'll have an article out tonight or tomorrow, hopefully tonight, on the the new signing we've just made. I don't want to say his names; I'll butcher it. <laughs> um, but yeah, you'll get a better analysis from Euro Expert, who's obviously very very good. Uh, he's typing that up right now for me. Um, and yeah, just uh, just obviously my Twitter and uh, my my personal account on Twitter is uh, at Max London's first. So come and follow me on there if you want as well. I post some stuff that I don't want to post on my main, like some opinions sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to post on my main, but yeah, I try and throw that up as well. Yeah, now nah, for sure. I mean, guys, make sure you check all that out. It will be linked in the description below. Loads of great stuff over there as always, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, Thank you for getting involved in the chat, as always. Greatly appreciate each and every single one of you. Guys, on the way out, one last favor. If you could keep subscribing to the channel, it would be greatly appreciated. Remember, every new subscriber is going to go into Monday's draw live on stream to win a Chelsea shirt of your choice for the upcoming season when they eventually release them. So make sure you subscribe on the way out. Make sure you run the likes up on the way out as well. I'll be back tomorrow night, guys, about 7 p.m. Uh, live Chelsea versus Fulham. Watch along. Make sure you stay locked in for that one on the channel. But yeah, until then, guys, take care. Up the Chelsea and peace out, people.